Let me make it up to you. I'll take you to dinner. My treat. It would be your treat. I'm a hot date. What's in it for me? Once I dressed up in a French maid's costume and Orson pretended to be a stubborn stain and why is everybody looking at me? Lock myself out. Naked. Oh. And then I fell. So how are you? He didn't really appreciate Brie. She was literally this perfect housewife. Like, why do you complain about her being perfect? Do you have a problem? A material princess, a material girl. She's kind of like, oh, wow, that's like this new man. Ooh, hello. How are you today? Hello, my beautiful darlings. Welcome back to my channel. I hope you're having an amazing day today and thank you so much for watching. Today, we're going to talk about Desperate Housewives. And I don't know why, but nobody is talking about this masterpiece. And talking about femininity is really a feminine TV show. It's really empowering for women. And that's why I'm wearing red because like it's the theme of the TV show and also, oh wow, look at all this. I have all the DVDs. It's just a lot of DVDs. And I started a collection collecting all the seasons since I was like 13 or 14. So I know this TV show. This TV show helped me learn English. This is through this TV show, through watching it again and again and again that I learned English. In case you didn't know, I'm French. Oui, je parle français, je suis française. And this TV show is like my whole teenage years. I was obsessed with it, obsessed. I would watch it again and again. So I really know it by heart. I'm so excited to do this video. And nobody's talking about Desperate Housewife. Why not? Because this is a masterpiece. And if you haven't watched it, you need to watch it. And in this video, I'm going to talk about the feminine qualities of each character. So what are the feminine qualities for each character? What are the feminine qualities for Gabrielle, Brie? Are they in their feminine energy? Are they more in their masculine energy? What is their style? What is their feminine powers? And everything that we can learn from this beautiful TV show. So if you want to know more, keep on watching. But first, I just wanted to let you know that if you want to see more of my content, I talk about fashion, femininity, old Hollywood glamour, movies, TV shows, and anything to make you become a highly feminine lady and to upgrade your confidence. If you're to join the channel, the link is down below and also follow me on my Instagram and on TikTok. It starts in a neighborhood. It's a beautiful neighborhood, almost like the perfect neighborhood. And you have four main characters, four women, and each woman have their own characteristic. They're all very different. And in the neighborhood, there's so many things going on. We start with the suicide of Mary Alice, which was one of the first of the more four main characters. So the four main characters are all friends together. They're neighbors, but they're also friends. And there's so many things going on. I cannot even resume Desperate Housewife. It's not just a silly TV show. It's really funny. It's really smart. It's really witty. It's deep sometimes. You have every emotion when you watch this TV show. Even though it's boiling outside, but I did some tea and I put some ice on it to make it cold because it's just way too hot to drink tea but I cannot resist drinking tea especially in this beautiful beautiful teacup let's talk about Gabrielle Solis first of all I love her I think she's my favorite character I also love Brie both are really on top of my favorite character but Gabrielle is really the one that I was obsessed with when I was younger she is so glamorous and I think my style is really inspired by her style. I think Gabrielle Solis is the femme fatale of the group. She has a luxurious lifestyle, a femme fatale aura, very seductive, very feminine. She loves the attention. She loves to be adored. She loves to be the star. And her husband, Carlos, is extremely masculine. I think he's the most masculine of the husbands with Mike. He was very controlling in season one. But then afterwards, you, you see the evolution of each character each character become better and better and they evolve and they become more mature and Gabrielle she started with cheating on Carlos which was really bad I, I didn't like it because he was still even though he was quite controlling the season one he was still a good husband he was providing he was you know offering her the lifestyle that she wanted but she wanted more emotions from him. She wanted to be closer to him and he was leaving her alone constantly. So she was like, okay, I'm just going to see somebody else. You know, Carlos, I didn't marry you so I could have dinner by myself six times a week. You know how bored I was today? 
I came this close to actually cleaning the house. Which was the gardener and I didn't really like it. But then afterwards in the other seasons, I just loved the power that she exudes. But after they evolved, they had the best relationships. Like really, they had one of the best relationship in the show. And just let out this huge, happy, totally unrestrained laugh. And I thought to myself, now that is a sound I'd like to hear the rest of my life. They're really funny together. They're a spicy Latin couple. He's just my favorite. He's very protective, very masculine, providing. I've never met anyone like her. And when she smiles at me, you can't put a price on it. So I don't care if I have to work 20 hours a day to keep her happy. I'll do it. Gabrielle is portrayed as extremely glamorous, very fashionista, very fashionable. And she has a whole walk-in closet and she loves designer. She loves to have a beautiful car. She loves beautiful diamonds, beautiful jewelry, loving material things, which I love as well. You know, I'm like a material princess, a material girl. I only saw her clothes from Paris and her platinum jewelry and her brand new diamond watch. No, I told you the money. She always dress up in a fancy way, whatever she does. Like wherever she goes, she's always dressed impeccably to the nines and always dressed in a feminine, seductive way. She always know how much power she has with her physical appearance. And she's a woman with a certain strong personality. She is very seductive, but she knows what she wants. In fashion, she has a style that is the ultimate feminine style and carries herself with pride she wears a lot of satin and silk dresses that's when i really fell in love with the style of gabrielle i would always want to wear all of her dresses that she had i was like oh my god i'm gonna have a collection of dresses just like she does and i do uh, but you can see it even in my style even if you see a little bit of my style you can see that i'm very inspired by her style really she loves to have attention on her, her everyday wear is a lot of silk satin tops like beautiful statement tops with for example uh, white pants or jeans she's wearing jeans also when she's more casual but then she's wearing heels with it or sometimes she's wearing track suits you know when she's more laid back at home, but beautiful tracksuits. The one that je sais couture, that are velvet and red and pink. So even when she is just lounging at home and she's wearing a tracksuit, she's wearing the ones that are the most feminine tracksuits. She confidently embraced her curves with figure hugging silhouette that accentuate her hourglass figure. And Gabrielle is not afraid to experiment with vibrant colors and bold prints, making a striking statement with her outfit. And Gabrielle Gabrielle's love for high fashion and couture dresses is really evident in her choices. She always have an impeccable grooming. From perfectly styled hair and sultry makeup, it's a perfect mix of confidence, sensuality, and high fashion flair. I think one of the biggest qualities of Gabrielle is her confidence. That's why I was always fascinated by her, her femme fatale, aura her confidence how she carries herself of like i know who i am i'm that woman i know i can get whatever i want i know i have a feminine power let me make it up to you i'll take you to dinner my treat it would be your treat i'm a hot date what's in it for me she's using her beauty and charm to navigate any situation so at the end of the tv show she also becomes more compassionate and more caring and less selfish let's say she becomes loving and caring when she has children but at the beginning she is very much into this vibe of i'm putting myself first which is the dark feminine she embodies the dark feminine in a beautiful way which i think is a really good thing i told you the feminine energy puts herself first that's why she's so radiant she's the one that is the most in her feminine energy so about her story with her husband she met carlos when she was a model and at the beginning i think at one episode she explains how they met and how he courted her and you can see that she sees herself as the prize so that's why i'm saying she's the most feminine she embodies that feminine inner power of i have standards and i am the price she was explaining to her niece like you know how many shows did carlos has to see for me to even look at him six you know how many runway shows he sat through before i would even look at him six 
It wasn't that many. Six. So that means that she was putting herself on a pedestal. Even though Carlos was a multimillionaire, she was like, still, no, I am the prize. You have to pursue me. You have to put in the work to have me. Did all of that and he saw her as the prize. So then he asked her out. He asked her to have dinner with her. She says yes. But then she said last minute, she said that she was sick. And when he finally asked me out, I said, okay. But then at the last minute, I backed out saying I didn't feel well. You weren't really sick? Claro. I had a pedicure and then went to Sardi's for drinks. And then she said, two weeks later, he gave me this, like the engagement ring. And it's true that he did propose to her very, very soon after he met her. Like, I think a couple of weeks after he met her. I rented a yacht that day. Really? It's hilarious. A week later, he gave me this. I lost that deposit. So it's really about what you embody. And you can say, yes, but Gabrielle was beautiful. But I can tell you, it's really about your energy because you have so many beautiful women and you can see even in media, you have a lot of beautiful women that are models and everything. They have a terrible love life and they have horrible men that treat them badly, that use them and everything. But it's about how you are with your standards. Uh, it's about you imposing your standards and Gabrielle, she does that a lot in the tv show so that's why i love her that's why she's a good example she has some flaws but like everybody okay but i think she's the one also that evolved the most in the tv show with brie also uh she is really evolving really maturing when she has kids at first she shows her dark feminine like her standards her i'm that woman energy but then she can show her light feminine once she is more comfortable once he does provide for her and do everything for her she shows her caring and loving side now let's talk about susan and i love susan she's also very cute but i have to agree that she is not the most confident of the ladies Susan is like the girl next door, okay? She is clumsy, she's kind of romantic, um, she's too nice most of the time. I think she lacks some boundaries. She's obsessed with men, I have to say. Like, she's way too obsessed with men. Have you ever in your life been without a man? Of course I have. When? I don't know, I'm not sure. Uh, you would think, you would actually think that it's Gabrielle because of how she dressed, like she's very sensual, very seductive, but in reality, Gabrielle is just very sensual and seductive, but she has a lot of boundaries. Men don't approach her like that. She's very selective. But Susan, she's like obsessed with the attention of men, of almost any men. She was with Carl her ex-husband that cheated on her. She did not have enough boundaries. And he left her instead of her leaving him. When a man is like that, he's not a man of value. A man should not cheat on you. It was too watery the night she found lipstick on Carl's shirt. She burned it the night Carl told her he was leaving her for his secretary. Edie even said at some point that Susan cannot be alone. And you can see it, like she, she cannot be alone. She jumped from relationship to relationship. She neglects her daughter in some way. She's quirky, she's cute, she's nice, but there's no acknowledgement of her mistakes. It's always like, oh, poor Susan, it's okay. But then she does something that you shouldn't do and it's like, oh, poor Susan, it's okay. Always a little bit like the victim. She dressed in a very casual way. She's the opposite of Gabrielle. She would wear a simple, very simple top with jeans still showcasing her feminine silhouette like she is a very beautiful woman but she's not super super extra feminine when you think about susan you don't think about this highly feminine dresses and everything you think about comfort you think about jeans if you think about cardigans like she has a lot of long cardigans but when she's going out she does put on beautiful dresses also casual dresses that allows for ease and movement because also she's an artist she's a painter so you can see that a lot with artists they have a more casual way of dressing she was also a little bit bohemian in her way of thinking in her way of dressing also she's kind of relatable and down to earth and so that in that way a lot of people would relate to her contrary to gabrielle uh, and you can see i don't relate to susan because of my 
glamorous extravagant style i relate to gabrielle so susan is also very sensitive and empathetic she's known for her kind heart she's known to be like in her emotions she's very emotional i think she's the most emotional out of the four she is known for her ability to connect to others emotionally you can see she's always the one to listen, to have empathy, to really want to help others. At some point, I think it was in season seven, uh, she was helping Paul, even though Paul was a horrible man and he did horrible things, but she still wanted to believe that he could change. You know, she believes in others, in the good, in the good of others. I mean, she's also super clumsy. She is the clumsy one. She is like, oh she's always falling she's always like doing some ridiculous things and it's really really funny when you see it especially in the first season you could see it a lot I can walk down the street and hold my head high <gasps> when she was after mike which we're going to talk about she always managed to have a positive outlook in life she's very positive which i think is a good quality susan i think is her in her light feminine most of the time she does not she's not really in her dark feminine and sometimes even in her wounded feminine and wounded feminine energy is more of this broken feminine energy of just like you're more insecure you're looking for external validation a lot and i can see that in susan she's not having enough boundaries she's needy she's too nice and you can see it with men she's looking for the validation of men seven boyfriends through high school and college only 41 days single face it meyer you're weak which we can talk about with her relationship with Mike, which is, Mike is also one of my favorite men with Carlos. I think Carlos is my ultimate favorite man. He's like really the perfect man for me. I would want to marry Carlos. Mike is also really masculine. He's a very masculine man. Mike is like this tough guy. He's not super wealthy like Carlos. Carlos is like a multimillionaire, but Mike is just like a plumber, but he's still a hardworking man. He's still very sweet. He's nice. And he's like the strong man that is not afraid of anything. That translates a lot of masculinity. And he's super handsome. So obviously Susan, when she sees him arriving in the first season, she's kind of like, oh wow, that's like this new man. Ooh. And she is in a sort of a battle with Edie to conquer Mike. And I didn't like it. Because for me, it's Mike that should conquer you. It's Mike that should be after you, not the other way. She was reminded that yeah. when it came to men... Do you think you could stop by later tonight and take a look at my pipes? Women don't fight fair. Sure. Thanks. Like I think in the first season, she's chasing him too much. Uh, she's doing some strategic thing to kind of make him ask her out or have his attention even Edie was doing that a lot they were in competition and if you are in that energy of being in a competition to win a guy over he's never gonna value you in this tv show it's not a good example but in reality he's never going to value you if you do that even though mike is super masculine i'm sure he would have chased her like crazy always want to provide for his family even when he didn't have a lot of money he was a plumber and he felt bad when they had financial problems and susan had to do some weird jobs <laughs> does anybody remember that susan come on he was feeling so bad and he was like no that's my role that's my role as a man to provide for my family let's talk about my second favorite brie van de camp brie is like the perfect housewife she's like this perfect mother perfect homemaker and perfectly dressed actually it was a beautiful thing i mean it's a beautiful thing to care about things to want to make things beautiful i'm the same but then perfectionism to the extreme make you not enjoy things and i think i talked a lot about it on my video about the five feminine archetypes i will link it below if you want to see it she is traditional and she is depicted as meticulous organized and she values etiquette and social decorum brie is known for being the best cook of the whole street brie was known for her cooking and for making her own clothes 
and for doing her own gardening and for reupholstering her own furniture. She's also shown as very resilient and determined in the faces of challenges. We drive carpool. That's enough. This is a very bad man. He attacked our friend and her husband protected her and now we are gonna protect them. So in terms of her style, she has also one of the best style. Very, very elegant with her tailored silhouette classic pieces, structured blazer and tailored dresses, everything that also accentuate her figure, her feminine figure, everything is super feminine also. Uh, you can see that Brie is more conservative, she dress with neutral colors, white cream soft pastels. Brie also appreciates luxurious fabrics such as silk, cashmere, which add so much sophistication to all of her outfits. You can see her in a lot of silk blouses, which is stunning on her. Every time I see her, I admire all of her outfits. As she coordinates accessories with delicate jewelry, it reflects her feminine and refined persona. She has a meticulous grooming. Her hair are always perfect. Even her husband said that her hair do not move. That's how perfect they are. In terms of her feminine energy, she does have a lot of feminine energy. She is extremely elegant, extremely ladylike. She cares a lot about etiquette, which I love about her. She's using her light and sometimes dark feminine energy. She does have strong values and boundaries, and she's very confident in that way. Actually, uh, no, we haven't had sex yet. We're waiting until we get married. Oh my God, you're serious? And she does evolve and change a lot in the TV show. At the beginning, she is more focused on appearing perfect and appearances and everything. And at the end of the show, you can see that she evolves and she learned to not care as much. Once I dressed up in a French maid's costume and Orson pretended to be a stubborn stain. And why is everybody looking at me? I think she's also a very good friend. And especially at the end, the last season, she was such a good friend and her friends were not appreciative enough, in my opinion. She does have a lot of different relationships. So at the beginning, she's married to Rex, that, which is a doctor. And then afterwards, she's married to Orson, which is a dentist, I believe. After also another season, she has a relationship with Keith, I think he was a painter in her house and he was way younger than her. Maybe the main one will be Orson because he was there for a long time. And you can see that her relationship with him, they had a lot in common, a lot more in common with Orson than with Rex. Rex was a little bit weird. This guy was, he had some really weird kink. Yeah. I didn't like him. It's that my Aunt Fern lives in Philadelphia and I don't want to be thinking about her while I'm spanking you with a leather strap. He didn't really appreciate Brie. She was literally this perfect housewife. Like, why do you complain about her being perfect? Do you have a problem? Why can't we ever have normal soup? Danielle, there's nothing abnormal about basil puree. I mean, I can agree he wanted a little bit more of the va va voom and unexpected uh, and maybe a little bit more of the sensuality or something like that, that she would let go a little bit. Still, she was still very beautiful and very elegant and it's not every lady that is like that. Orson, I think, her second husband really appreciated her a lot more. They had so much in common. He loved opera. She loved opera. He loved anything sophisticated. He helped her when she wanted to build her company. And <laughs> She's very competitive also I remember very competitive she's so funny Brie you remember how my croissant were always the best on the lane I remember you thinking that <laughs> you cannot just not love Brie she's so funny and also extremely smart can we talk about that Gabrielle also is super super smart Brie also is really smart and I love them for that like they are really funny when they have a plan in their head and they want something they are manipulating around to have what they want which always makes me laugh it's always super funny in the show why don't you all take your seats uh dessert is about to be served all right just yes Brie knew how to take care of her guests. Now let's talk about Lynette. 
Lynette Scavo. So Lynette is completely, I think, different again. They're all very different, and that's what I love about Desperate Housewife, is that all the characters are different, so there's always one you can identify with. Lynette is uh, the more carrier woman. She's very goal-oriented. She's very controlling. She thinks she's always right she has a tendency to obsess and want to intervene in absolutely everything and don't just wet the toothbrush i can tell she's like the super mom super boss and she is completely completely in her masculine energy she started with being with tom when they met she was very successful at her career but when they started having children he said that she should stay home and raise the kids of course she didn't cook much while she was moving up the corporate ladder but when her doctor announced lynette was pregnant her husband tom had an idea why not quit your job kids do better with stay-at-home moms it will be so much less stressful which I think she hated that she hated to be at home. I think she's more in her masculine energy and she thrived more in her masculine energy. And there's nothing wrong with that, by the way. Even though I'm talking a lot about feminine energy, there are some women that love to be in their masculine energy. And it's the case for Lynette. I think she does not want to be in her feminine. She wants to be in her masculine energy. She's very determined and resourceful. She loves when people depend on her. That's why she was also good at being a mother and at handling so many kids because they had so many kids. Because she was fiercely protective of her children and her family. She is sometimes in her feminine when she's very motherly caring with her children, with her babies. You can see it sometimes but most of the time she's in her masculine. She's like a dedicated mother who is willing to do anything for her children i think it's a good quality i think they are all good mothers i mean <laughs> i mean gabrielle is funny with her children i have to say <laughs> and lynette lynette is always this fierce mother throughout the whole tv show but she has some trouble with her kids also because they're really really hard to handle you are going to behave today i am not going to be humiliated in front of the entire neighborhood and just so you know how serious i am Santa's cell phone number. And that's why probably she had to be in her masculine. She had to be to handle everybody. That's really, really hard what she's doing. Like she's exhausted. She has this image of the exhausted mother. You can see it also in her style as she prefer a comfortable style. And even in her style, she's a bit more masculine. She prefer oversized shirts, jeans, hair up and not really a lot of makeup, very simple, low maintenance, low effort because it's almost like she's struggling, she doesn't have time, she doesn't have help, she's exhausted. I, I already when you have one kid, it's a lot of work, okay? But how many kids did she had? Like four, five? It's enormous. <laughs> um, I don't know how she did all of that. She's like a warrior. She's like a superhero or something. I mean, mothers are superheroes in general. We respect mothers and I think mothers and I think mothers are not respected enough. They're not put forward and put on a pedestal on the pedestal that they should have because being a mother is the hardest thing in the world and it's not valued enough. So Lynette is fully in her masculine energy, but it does have an impact on her relationship with Tom. And that's why when I saw like the last seasons, I absolutely wanted to do a video on it just to talk about all the mistakes that she was doing <laughs> but you can see throughout the whole seasons she was always the one in charge he was always more the one that is a little bit stepped back basically she was the boss of the house she was wearing the pants she was deciding of the vacations she was deciding of everything that needed to be decided about the kids the house everything and Tom was a bit like yeah okay at the end you had Tom accepting a bigger job with more responsibility a successful job with a lot more money and it does have a big impact on her marriage because she was not used to it she was used to being the boss the one leading the show she had trouble with him letting him become successful letting him become the leader because when a man becomes more successful has more responsibility he wants to be in charge more you say Tom when you start making the money you can start making the decisions 
You've been sitting on that for a decade? Wow! She was creating a company with her friends Rene, which Rene is so funny. I love Rene. I also liked Edie, but I think I didn't really vibe with her personality that much. I always thought she was the villain for some reason. But Rene, ooh, she was so juicy. She was so like luxurious. She was so funny. She was so confident. Like she was something. She was also a femme fatale in a way. Ah, you know, sometimes I drive fast on purpose just to see if I can flirt my way out of the ticket. So Lynette and Rene build a company, a decoration company. And so Tom wanted to hire her. He was like, okay, I'm gonna hire you. I'm gonna give you $20,000 and you redecor, to redecor my office. And I want it to be a certain way. I want it to be like this, like this, and like this. And Lynette was like, no, I know Tom. It's not really his style. I know what he wants. Like, I'm gonna redecorate it however I want. Tom, this, Office is not who you are. You're a great down-to-earth guy, not some jerk that has to show people how powerful he is. Like, I know he likes this. He, it's not his style to be like this. No, Lynette, he asked for this particular style, which was more style that is masculine and powerful. And, you know, with his new job, Tom wanted to have a more masculine office with like that represent power. He wanted something that looked like Trump <laughs> office or something you know something ego boosting to boost his ego Lynette was like no Tom is more humble he's not like this he's not this guy that needs to prove that he's masculine and everything I know how he is and Renee was like yes but he asked for this he want that we should listen to him and that's her problem with Lynette she had problem with listening to Tom to what he wanted she didn't want it to just surrender and listen a little bit more to what he was saying and just accepting things from him she always wanted to be like in the control i have a role to play and i play it damn well and i'm sorry if that threatens you she was like no i know him better like almost like a child i know better than you i'm gonna you're gonna do it this way. At some point also he said that he had a surprise because he was making a lot more money. And so he wanted to take her and the kids to Hawaii, which was incredible. I was like, yes, Tom, you're in your masculine energy. You are providing. He offered the whole family vacations in Hawaii. She was not happy about it. She said, I'm the one always organizing the vacations. So no, we're not going to Hawaii. It was like, well, I want to bring the children to Hawaii. I want to make this the surprise. I did this surprise for you. Why aren't you happy? She wasn't able to receive anything that he was giving. You want to control the process like you always do. Watch and you feel that power slipping away and you can't stand it. You can't stand that I am running the show. She was never in her feminine energy receiving. So he could not really provide. And he took her engagement ring and put a bigger diamond on it, so which was a big surprise. I mean, it's beautiful. Why wouldn't you be happy that your husband wants to spoil you? And then she was like, no, I liked it better before. And then Tom said to her, well, Lynette, you were always complaining how the size was too small. I really don't know what you want. I don't know what you want to make you happy. Like she was never happy. And that's the problem. If you are never happy with what a man does, he will give up at some point. <laughs> Men want to make you happy. I mean, I walked in here and I thought, how great is this? She gets it. She's happy. She's proud of me. Like when a man provide, when a man give you things, they want to make you happy. The, the happy energy is when you are the most magnetic. It's when you are the most beautiful. You know, you have some men that put no effort. He did a lot of effort to make her happy so you have to be appreciative of it so thank you so much for watching my beautiful darlings i hope you liked it and i hope you liked this video i hope you love this show as much as i do i have all the dvds and now talking about it makes me want to watch all the dvds i have so let's have a discussion in the comments down below and let me know which character is your favorite but don't forget to subscribe down below and also follow me on my instagram and on tiktok there's a lot of funny videos that i do over there on tiktok on instagram and here on this channel as well so join me and my cup of tea and voila <laughs> until next time i'm giving you so much kisses and i love you darlings Mwah.